Last night I was having trouble falling asleep because of how I couldn't stop thinking of the episode Cricket and how much it meant to me on a personal level, to the point that I actually started tearing up multiple times throughout the night. Cricket is a classic tale of perseverance and what happens when you face your fears and has quickly become my new favorite episode in Bluey because of the messages shown. Cricket's just about hitting a ball around the grass. Cricket's about more than that, kid. Jack's reappearance. Go! Rusty's family reveal, but a large part on why this episode is so special to me is actually because of sentimental reasons, largely in part of actually the people who are watching the video right now. You buddies are the reason why this episode is so incredibly important to me, but I want to save all that juicy stuff later on in the video. I started talking about Bluey due to my history of working with kids in a therapeutic setting, which has inspired me to start this series. And I might spend the majority of this video just gushing over the episode because of how incredible it is, but it's still going to be analytical because frankly, that's just my personality. In fact, the episode is so good that it's on the records that Dan Brum, the voice of Stripe, Starfest! Woo! and sound director of Bluey, said that this is his favorite episode yet. And at the time of writing this, this episode is the highest rated Bluey episode on IMBD. What? So I'm not alone in saying that this episode is special. Actually, it's so special to me that I decided to do something that I've never done before. And it's going to be a nice step in the right direction for the people who have noticed my, well, some people have called it a depressing wall. So I decided to get this. This is a screenshot of the episode that we're talking about today that I printed and put on a wood panel for all to see in the background of all my videos because of what this episode means to me. But before we get into the cricket bats and wickets of the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You have no idea how much it helps me out to get these videos out to more fans like you. And let's talk about my new favorite episode of Bluey. But cricket's just about hitting a ball around the grass. Cricket's about more than that, kid. Sometimes Rusty would play with his older brother's mates, but he was so scared of time. <gasps> Maybe wait till you're a bit older. Rusty didn't want to give up. One day, a letter came. Mom, there's a letter from Dad! Look, as you grow up, you'll face harder things than a cricket ball, and you'll have two choices. Back away and get out, or step in front <laughs> and play a pull shot. Just keep your eye on the ball and take care of your little sister for me. Love. Dad. Ah, I got it! Oh, you got me! That's what cricket's about, kid. To start, the episode has a rather unique perspective in the form of Bandit narrating in the past tense. Let me tell you about the time we tried to get Rusty out. As if he's telling the story to someone who is interested in Rusty's past, which automatically tells the audience that this story will be focusing on the ever-caring Red Kelpie Rusty, and as they call up Rusty the Bat, Rusty hasn't. there's a very small interaction he has with his little sister Dusty of him showing his sister the optimal hand positioning for catching a ball in case one ever flies to Towards her, which ties into a super sweet moment near the end, but in this episode we actually learn about Rusty being, frankly, an amazing cricket player which was not expected at all. There are moments with Rusty in previous episodes that are now clear foreshadowing tools Joe Brum, the writer of Bluey, was doing to give us hints towards Rusty's athletic abilities that totally flew over my head. Like in the episode Fairies where he is playing cricket in the cul-de-sac with a couple of Bluey's neighbors, as well as the episode Handstand where he is seen taking a football through the healer's window perfectly every single time. And what's even more incredible is that this episode Cricket actually was in production since season one, which makes these small little athletic moments for Rusty even more special because it's clear that Joe was wanting to tell the story with Rusty for a really, really long time. And we even know with some interviews with Joe Brum that Rusty was originally going to be the main character of the show. I will say, however, that the original script for the episode Cricket was going to be called Red Rover, focusing not on Rusty, this is crazy! Even though that would be an incredibly clever reference to his color, but instead the healer's younger brother Stripe, yeah. set back in the 80s, which was something Joe was really proud of, but was rejected. Ha ha! 
and eventually turned into this amazing episode that we have today, Cricket. Credit to Meme Machine for telling me this. And as we transition back over to Rusty, we get an amazing reveal in literally just the first 30 seconds of the episode, which is Rusty's house, in a real welcome surprise reveal of his big brother, which was so completely unexpected. <laughs> And I might be saying that a lot because we had an expectation for the episode for a little bit now with some leaks and all we really knew was that we're going to learn about Rusty's little sister Dusty and him being a rock star at cricket. But when watching this episode for the first time, I got chills and honestly still do thinking about how incredible of a reveal this is for Rusty's character and how it only gets better as it goes along because now we get told about how much Rusty loves Cricket by Bandit. Rusty loved Cricket. And we really get to see how special it is to his whole family with a dedicated Cricket field in his front yard and how his special interest in Cricket would give him time to bond with Dusty and his brother Digger. He'd play all day with his brother and sister. And even his mother and father later on. But for now, we get another small interaction with Rusty and Dusty that you should take a mental note of for that special scene I keep hinting at. Can you hit me a cat? Not yet, Dusty! And because of all this practice he would get with his family, the adults spend the majority of the episode trying to find a way to be Rusty. Man, this kid's good! What I really love about this episode is that they could have easily just shown Rusty being good without any explanation, but time and time again, as the adults come up with a plan on how to beat him, they have these special flashback scenes with him and his family on how different circumstances helped Rusty improve his game, making him the self-made cricket player he is today, and these flashback scenes goes from being hilarious uh -oh. Run! Hey, come back here! with Rusty learning how to perfect his aim so he doesn't hit his mom in the face since he had a tendency to hit the ball to the right to being extremely emotional with the hardships he had to experience when wanting to play with his brother's friends. But my absolute favorite one is the very next scene because a certain reappearance of a character. Now before I continue, I would imagine my American audience might be wondering how you can get access to watch this episode, and you can't actually access this unless you use a VPN to bypass location-based restrictions, which is why I'm happy to say this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. And it's extremely easy to use because all you need to do is press one button to activate the VPN and then go to the ABC website to find all the episodes that are exclusive to Australia right now, including this episode, Cricket. Atlas VPN is currently the best VPN deal in the market. It stops ads and malware. You can save coin while shopping online. It protects an unlimited amount of devices as well as keeping your Google searches in private. And you can actually get this deal for $1.83 a month plus three extra months for free if you use my link in the comments and description of this video. And of course, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. After already failing to get Rusty out three times now, Stripe steps up to pitch Get a spin, okay, Rusty? as the adults devise a plan to get Rusty out by spinning the ball in a way that is rather unfair to Rusty. Put a rod on that crack there, see? Oh yeah, good call. Luckily, Rusty also knows how to handle unpredictable pitches as well because of his time spent playing cricket with his best friend Jack. Got him! And before I talk about this next part, I just want to say before watching this episode, I had no idea Jack was going to be in it. Me and a couple of my buddies on Twitter were hoping to see him show up even briefly because of how much we love Jack. And after seeing Rusty's house, his sister, and big brother revealed, I was already feeling major hype and joy from these new additions to Rusty's family, clearly on my face during the live watch party of this episode that I had the pleasure of doing with Ozzy Go Margie herself. Still can't believe that I was able to do that, but man, as soon as I saw Jack, I freaked out. Yeah. Oh my god! Jack's my absolute favorite character in Bluey, so whenever he shows up, I tend to have that reaction, and Jack isn't a character we get to see a whole lot of. He only has speaking roles in four different episodes, with this one being the fifth, but this showcasing of him is phenomenal because of the fact that whenever we see Rusty and Jack together, 
it's always at Calypso's school, except for that quick background cameo in Curry Quest, but this time we get to see them hanging out at Jack's house, solidifying their friendship outside of school. This is the first time we ever get to see them together hanging out at one of their houses, but also we get to finally see what Jack's house looks like on the outside, which is so freaking cool. The background art for Jack's house was actually leaked by accident by one of the artists for Bluey a few months prior, so I knew this was coming up, but I did not expect to see it so soon, let alone in this episode. And I remember actually seeing this art for the first time reposted by a Bluey fan artist on Twitter that I'll remain anonymous because after we had an exchange of extreme excitement, they decided to delete their post of it to respect the artist's decision to remove the leak. But we also get to see them in the car together, which is just everything to me. The car scene is only about three seconds, however, if you really look closely, we get another subtle nod to Jack's alluded neurodevelopmental condition of either ADHD or autism. I have an entire video dedicated to the subject and how the studio uses him to represent people with these conditions in an extremely positive light, so I'll try my best not to rehash it too much here, but in every episode Jack is featured in, they hint towards him having these conditions and this episode is no different, as the animators showcase subtle body movement of him slightly fidgeting with his feet, as well as him having a fidget popper next to his car seat. And this is off topic, but just look how happy he and Rusty are in this scene. It just melts my heart and it's so extremely special to me because as a Bluey artist myself, I actually had this exact scene written down to draw in my book of art ideas, minus Lulu since February, but I don't have to draw it anymore because it's in the freaking show. I mean, I got this wall decoration for a reason, but this wall decoration really means a lot more than just that to me. It symbolizes a major milestone for me that makes me feel extremely sentimental, but let's discuss that near the end of this video. back on topic which was how Rusty learned how to overcome unpredictable pitches and it's all because of Jack's home field advantage. Oh, not fair. And he gets plenty of time mastering this because of how often Rusty's dad was on deployment. When Rusty's dad was away, he'd get a lift home with his mate Jack. Rusty played at Jack's a lot that year. And it's a really small detail but when we do see Rusty succeed. Yeah. There's already two other tennis balls on Jack's roof really showing his mastery over this and I just adore them celebrating together here. Yeah! It's clear that Jack wasn't playing to win, but instead they probably made a shared goal on getting Rusty better at this particular skill, which makes the small celebration so incredibly sweet as well as his success over Stripe here. How did he hit that? All the skills he's accumulated thus far have all been due to different past experiences with cricket, but this next one is so incredibly compelling and emotional as Pat suggests a pace attack. attack. And after hearing this, Rusty is seen with a sad face, reminding him of the time he encountered Tiny. He can ball really fast. Got him! He was never brave enough to bat. Who's that? Until one day, he was. Uh. Oh! leaving him with a limp as he walks back home, but still filled with determination to never give up, as he still works up the courage to bat against Tiny, but mentally scarred from the event, that he actively dodges the ball instead of trying to hit it, and it's clearly still a sore subject for him, considering after just hearing Pat say the type of pitch Tiny is known for, he makes that sad face, but as we know, Rusty does overcome this fear after getting a very special letter in the mailbox. Mom! There's a letter from Dad! Now this next scene is so extremely special, and I know I keep saying this, but there's just so many good parts in this episode which is why it's such a masterpiece. But as the family gathers reading the letters from their dad, you can see everyone's different expressions on full display, which is just so extremely emotional and wholesome, especially when you see the way Rusty reacts to hearing the part that says, I'll see, see you, you all soon. soon. Miss you heaps, dad. The way his face lights up here is so freaking cute and I love how Digger and his mom immediately looks at him since we all know how much Rusty's dad means to him. Hey! Rusty! But the real kicker is the PS letter attached specifically addressed to Rusty. Can you read it? As we get to finally hear Rusty's dad's voice accompanied by an incredible musical swell and well, it can speak for itself. As you grow up. You'll face harder things than a cricket ball. 
and you'll have two choices. Back away Mama. and get out. Who's back is it? Or step in front <laughs> and play a pull shot. Finally seeing Rusty succeed and face his fears is so incredibly compelling since it was his dad's words that motivated him to finally reach that point. And the words said here is something I resonate with a lot because it's something I've had to tell a lot of people in my life professionally as well as close friends and not to mention even myself to help push them towards doing what their heart wants. And those words are, finding success is often thinking about what scares you the most and just doing it anyways. And the show really just sucker punches you again and again emotionally because directly after this we finally get to see what Rusty's dad looks like with these amazing parting words. Just keep your eye on the ball and take care of your little sister for me. Love. Dead. There is just so much buildup for everything that has been showcased in this episode, and it's so hard not to just rave over each little detail, but believe it or not, there's even more because those last words, take care, care of your, your little, little sister, sister for me, me, transitions perfectly into what happens next, not to mention the subtle things seen from Rusty and his sister earlier in the episode, with Dusty asking, Can you hit me? And the way Rusty helps her position her hands earlier in the background to show her how to catch one if it ever goes her way. So when Pat asks for one more, we get this next scene that is nothing short of amazing. Lucky's dad put everything he had into that ball. And Rusty could have smashed it into next week if he wanted to. But instead... I got it! He hit his little sister a catch. And as Dusty celebrates her win with Rusty, Rusty shows his ever caring nature that we know him for and celebrates with her clearly making her day. Earlier in the episode, Bandit tells Bluey, there's a lot more to cricket than that. For Rusty, it means so much more than hitting a ball around the park. It's sentimental for Rusty. It connects him to his family as a whole. It connects him to his mom, to his dad, keep your eye on the ball, his brother, to his friends, his past hardships, and most importantly right now, his sister. Take care of your little sister for me. <laughs> so when Bandit says that last line, that's what cricket's about, kid. It makes it that much more impactful as he looks into his past, as he goes into the professional field remembering his younger self and everything that has led him to that moment. This episode is perfect in just about every single way. There is so much information and details being thrown at you at once with all of these key details being anticipated by fans for almost a year now. Oh, yeah! with finally seeing Rusty's family dynamic, let alone his dad's face. And this episode holds a very sentimental place in my heart because it marks a couple different milestones for me. And it's the entire basis on why I got this decoration and what it truly means to me. Not only did I get the honor to have this episode be my first ever collab on the channel, it also got to be my first ever live stream watch of Bluey, which allowed me to experience it all with you buddies. And it's all because of the opportunity Aussie girl Margie presented to me to join the watch watch party last Saturday, all accumulating into an experience that I wouldn't trade for the world. Being bombarded with joy as I watched this for the first time with Rusty's tale of perseverance <gasps> and facing what scared him after that amazing letter from Rusty's dad. Seeing Jack again with subtle nods of confirmation from the animators with the fidget toy and him kicking his feet, and well just Jack being there was a real big treat since he's my favorite character. I mean if anybody saw us live you would have seen my raw emotions bleeding through, but just seeing all you buddies coming in as we watched even if it was just to say hi is just what makes it so special for me. So let me just say thank you all from the bottom of my heart, especially Margie for making this episode mean so much to me. I even got an amazing piece of fan art sent to me by the Twitter user Pick Your Biscuit to celebrate this collab of both of our Bluey's OCs, essentially doing Margie's famous intro line from her videos, which you should totally check out if you haven't down below, but I'm sure the majority of you have already seen her videos. <laughs> and please join me next time as I dig a little deeper into this episode and go over the little details seen within this episode that make it so special that I didn't get a chance to discuss mm. in this one, since if I did, this video would probably be a little bit too long for comfort. <laughs>
And thank you everyone for supporting me and getting me to 27,000 subscribers. It's really incredible because my last video I was celebrating 21,000 subscribers, so it's a bit mind-blowing to say the least, and it's really hard to find the right words to fully show my appreciation, but you have no idea how much you all mean to me, so thank you again. And with this milestone, we got some pretty incredible art sent to me, so as in tradition, their Twitter handles will be on the bottom left, and the first one comes from Picker Biscuit, with me celebrating on the front with 22k. I really love how cartoony and funky, and I don't know, it has a really good vibe to it, but he was actually like, this is not the real art, and sent me this one, but I will say I love both of them, <laughs> especially the one that you could say has less details because of just how funky it looks. And this next one comes from Milo Cat. Now Milo Cat has these really thick outlines on his drawings which really adds some depth to his drawings, but I really love how gentle the face looks here for my character. You can see his OC on the left celebrating my 22k plus subscriber milestone. This next one is a piece drawn on paper sent to me by Light Raptor. I love their art style. I'm not sure how to quite put it. it I guess it's more or less anime-like, but I just love the eyes and expressions as well as the stars on this one. And I'm not sure how to 100% put this, but everything on this particular drawing is really flowy and nice feeling, especially with the curves on the ears here. It really just makes it look extremely animated. Now this next one is another piece by Picker Biscuit with a updated design for my OC. He decided to add some blue accents to certain parts of the body here with some really radical sunglasses here with an explosion of 23k because I hit 23k literally a day after hitting 22k so that's a bit of a symbolism on that I suppose. Now this next one is from the artist Turned for the Worse where you can see me wagging my tail there which is incredible as well as some really nice curved lines for the paws as well as the feet, which I really enjoy. Just celebrating my 24K with some nice confetti, as well as a different color for my sunglasses here, which is always special. I just love whenever somebody changes how the sunglasses look. I love that. <laughs> I feel odd for having to keep saying this, but this next one is another piece by Picker Biscuit. <laughs> I really love how happy I look despite my face being all covered in <laughs> explosion powder, or maybe it's called suit, but I love how creative Picker gets with these fan art drawings of me. And I love how you can see the 24K really subtly in the smoke here. This next one is from Vibe B, which has a art style that's very similar-esque to the escape art style that we know in Bluey, with just a ginormous chocolate cake with 24k right there. I've always enjoyed whenever I see a drawing from Vibe because the escape art style is very simple but very pleasing to the eyes, so <laughs> I really enjoyed that piece. This next piece is by Kitten with me and her OC playing some PlayStation game here and I really really enjoy this because if you guys know about my past with my channel that I'm a pretty big video gamer so I really enjoyed this as well as sunglasses on my head so you can see the pure concentration on my face here and if you look really closely on the PlayStation console you can see a sticker that says Wow, 26.5k. And this final one is from my good friend Progress Pack Official. Now, originally this drawing was to celebrate my 900 followers on Twitter, but you can see it's scribbled out and now says 27k subs, with me just jumping for joy with this milestone. So, thank you all for sending me this fan art, as well as Picker Biscuit for sending me that collaboration fan art with me and Margie. That meant so much to me. And if you'd also like to send me your your art, please send me a direct message on my Twitter here or just tag me on Twitter with your art posted. And as always, thank you to the members who support me as little as $5 bucks a month, which are Clairvoyance, Rick and Glacius, Zach, and Mitchell. And you can also support me by clicking the link in the comments or description or on the top right to become a member. And don't forget to check out that special Atlas VPN deal so you can watch these new Bluey episodes on ABC. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I hope y'all have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye and the last shall be first to immerse in a pass out heat facing a mud with a moxie melted he woke up drowning in tchotchke hell born a cave with a torch on a wall then a window arrangement of porcelain dolls